They were two of America's most trusted TV journalists, but in the end, they made their own shocking headlines. Unforgettable Hollywood Tragedy Number 7, The Sudden Deaths of Peter Jennings and Tim Russert. Peter Jennings was born in Canada, but he became an American icon. He was somebody Americans welcomed into their living room every night, like clockwork, to bring them the news. Jennings was lured to the U.S. in 1964 as a news correspondent. After two decades, he ascended to the anchor chair of ABC's World News Tonight. I worked for Peter Jennings on World News, so I had that opportunity to learn from one of the best. And he was a consummate journalist. He cared about the facts. He did not want us to sensationalize the news. Over the years, Jennings became the nation's elder statesman at the anchor desk. I think I'm like all journalists who cover politics. I'm just lucky to get out of bed in the morning, period. On the April 5th, 2005 edition of World News Tonight, Peter Jennings made a startling announcement. Peter Jennings decided to do something unprecedented. He announced his own cancer diagnosis on the air. Didn't whitewash it, didn't let it leak out in the tabloids. He just looked America in the eye and said, I have cancer. He said, yes, I was a smoker for many years. And yes, I went back to smoking under the stress of September 11th. It was Jennings' last appearance on the air. In the last five months of his life, he was not only battling advanced lung cancer, but he was also dealing with the side effects of chemotherapy and possibly radiation. On August 7th, 2005, the anchor lost his fight. 2,000 people attended a service for Jennings. Jennings Memorial was at Carnegie Hall, which I think was a venue suited for how big of a person he really was. Whether you were in media, politics, really any field, you were there. And I think at the end of the day, uh, Jennings, somewhere up above, appreciated that. Less than three years after Jennings' death, another beloved journalist was the subject of heartbreaking news. Everyone was shocked and completely grief-stricken. He was, you know, much more than a host on the screen. Tim Russert was the product of a working-class family from Buffalo, New York. At the age of 41, he became host of America's longest-running television show, Meet the Press. Well, Meet the Press was one of those shows that, from its origins, was everything we wanted from a new show. It was fair, it was balanced, it was impartial, it focused on facts not sensational, scandalous, character-driven stories, and it was the place to go to really get your news. It looked at the issues of the day, politics, national security, and it made those very complex issues very consumable to the average person sitting on their couch on a Sunday. Guests and commentators from across the political spectrum found him to be a tough but unbiased interviewer who always knew his subject matter. In a city full of power plays and conniving and backstabbing, there sat Tim Russert, this big teddy bear of a man. He was the same talking to a president as he was talking to somebody on the street, and everybody responded to that. Aside from his hosting duties, Russert was a frequent guest commentator, best-selling author, and the Washington bureau chief for NBC News. But Russert's hectic lifestyle eventually caught up with him. He's talking about intense topics. He is having to deal with differing opinions, and he's having to work long hours. Stress plays a huge role on the mind and body. On June 13, 2008, after a rare three-day family vacation in Italy, Tim flew back to Washington, D.C. He had just come from vacationing with his family overseas and had flown back to voice over the show for Sunday. That morning in the recording booth, he slumped to the ground. Within minutes, paramedics arrived on scene and found Russert without a pulse. Despite numerous attempts, medical personnel were unable to resuscitate Tim on the way to the hospital. Tim Russert was said to be asymptomatic. That means he did not complain of symptoms. Symptoms generally uh, include uh, chest pain, shortness of breath, fatigue. We know that this was a sudden event. The official cause of death was cardiac arrest. Russert was just 58. He had something called a vulnerable plaque on the inside of one of his major coronary arteries that dislodged. There was probably a turn in the artery and it blocked the artery completely. 
And that is an explanation for many fatal heart attacks. Political figures from pundits to presidents sent their condolences to the family of the fallen journalist. When John McCain and Barack Obama and all the heavy hitters in politics showed up at his funeral, a lot of people were surprised. He had established long-term friendships with people over decades in Washington, D.C. and throughout the world. The salute that he received leaving this life was that commensurate with a really loved person.